Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we've got something very special in the studio. This is an all original late 60s, early 70s Fender Super Reverb. 410 speakers and like I said, untouched. So it's gonna be pretty special to plug this in and check it out. Now, as you guys may know, I am not a vintage gear guy. I have no vintage amps, no vintage guitars, no vintage pedals. It's just not something I've gotten into. But the market for old gear is insane. People will search their entire lives for a certain piece of gear. Maybe it's nostalgia, maybe it's something their favorite artist from back in the day played. Um, so all these like old guitars, old amps, there is an absolutely huge market for these. So what we're going to do is of course plug this thing in, but because it's my channel and I like to challenge, you know, certain myths and that kind of stuff, see if, you know, the claims of manufacturers or players is accurate, we're going to do this a little bit different. Now, the first thing I can tell you about this vintage Fender tube amp is it sounds absolutely amazing in this studio. There's no denying that. From the moment you turn it on, you know, it takes a few seconds as those tubes warm up and it just fills the whole space with this really kind of warm hum. That's the first thing you notice. Now, that's kind of what it sounds like. And so as you're playing that kind of like tube vintage circuitry or whatever, uh, just fills the whole studio with just that kind of undertow of hum. And, you know, lots of tube amps do that, but with these 410s, all original speakers, all original pots, wiring, all that kind of stuff, just hits a little bit different. That's the first thing I noticed. And when you plug in those 410s, yeah, just fill this with like overtones, harmonics, uh, natural compression. It just sounds amazing. And of course, we're going to hear it in a second. Now, what you don't see most times when I'm doing videos, I'll see if I can swing this around, is uh, these amps aren't usually in the shot, but this is what I usually play on. So the top, you can see Mezzabarba there, the black one, and then a Marshall. You can just see the corner of the DSL there. Orange, obviously. Below the orange is a dual rectifier. So lots of tube amp choices for sure, but nothing like a clean fender. I have my my Boogie um, Blue Angel that I use for clean tones, and that does sound absolutely amazing. Uh, but this one definitely hits a little bit different. And that's why I'm saying it is special. Even though, you know, I'm not a vintage gear guy, I can really appreciate what this amp does. Now, as I said, because it's my channel, we're gonna do something a little bit different. Let's find out what we're gonna do. Right, so here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take my Fender Player Series, made in Mexico Stratocaster, beautiful guitar, and I'm gonna record some clips using the vintage Fender tube amp. I could put a compilation together and just show how awesome this amp is and you know make everybody want it and it's unattainable, but that's not really the way I roll. So what we're gonna do is also record the same clips into one of the cheapest things I can think of, which is software. Software is so flexible and you know easily attainable, and we're gonna see how the real vintage Fender sounds up against software. Now the software I'm going to use today is S-Gear. So I use Bias. I also use S-Gear and I think the clean tones on S-Gear are very, very good. So that's what we're going to do. Uh, vintage tube amp versus, you know, something anybody can get software. And we're going to find out if vintage is king or if it doesn't really matter. So here we go with the audio clips. Now I'm gonna mix and match which one comes first. So you might be hearing the vintage Fender first, or you might be hearing the software first. And I wanna see if you guys can tell the difference. And then after the clip plays, I'm gonna tell you which one was which. All right, here we go. Let's start the comparison.
right, you guys, clip one was the software. Clip two was the vintage Fender tube amp. For example, number two, clip one was the Fender amp and clip two obviously was the software. Now, for example, number three, clip one was the software and clip two was the vintage Fender. Example number four, first clip was software, and of course, second clip, vintage Fender tube amp. And finally, for example, number five, clip one was the tube amp, clip number two was the software. So the big question is, well, could you guys hear a difference? And as more and more clips got played, maybe it got easier and easier to identify between the two. Here in the studio with the monitors, it was pretty easy to tell the difference between the two. It's just really, really hard to replicate what was happening <laughs> with this amp. I didn't have the volume high. I'll show you guys the settings, like the EQ settings I used. Um, you know, the amp, amp really between like three and four. And even at that with, you know, this Stratocaster with low output pickups, um, this amp was doing some amazing things. <laughs> it was compressing um, and then it was breaking up and then you got all that like harmonic distortion and all those overtones. So this amp was doing a ton of stuff and it sounded like when you're sitting right next to it, sounded absolutely amazing. Um, so to replicate that in software is very, very tricky. Um, and I thought the software did a pretty good job. You know, you could hear the software kind of breaking up, maybe not quite as much compression. Um, on the software, there's a setting called SAG. It just couldn't, <laughs> it couldn't keep up to what this was doing. Now this is 50 years old, all original. I think it got retubed once, something like that, but all the speakers, all the pots, all everything. Everything is original on this amp. And so, yeah, to like try to really mimic that is just difficult for software. And I think we've all used modelers, whether, you know, stomp boxes or software or like hardware units like Axe Effects and that kind of stuff. And you can get some amazing tones on those. I just wanted to try it out for myself to see, you know, how hard it would be to mimic a vintage amp, you know, for myself. And hopefully uh, you guys found it interesting as well. Uh, the answer is it's very hard. <laughs> it's really hard. Um, but yeah, in the software, I tried to mimic everything. I cranked the sag up and it did make a difference. Like the, the attack on the software was pretty noticeable, right? The attack on this was just like an easing in. And on the software, it was pretty like very, very tight. And when I you know, took the SEG control and, you know, jacked that up. It did take some of the, that harsh, you know, attack, which you might want, you know, from time to time, depending on what style you play. Um, and it did soften it a bit, but this was like a cushiony pillow mattress thing. Every time you played, it was just like, you know, like it just kind of like eased in and then just bloomed. And that, like I said, is just so hard to, to mimic on software. So I thought the software sounded awesome. I will continue to use software. It's so convenient and you can get some amazing tones out of it. Vintage amps, is this gonna, you know, change me into like an amp chaser? 
I don't think it is, but it's pretty special. And uh, yeah, all the amps behind me here, uh, or in front of me here, sound great. Like the Marshall, great, the Mezzabarba, all that kind of stuff. Maybe everything but the orange doesn't have a great clean tone, uh, but it's usable. All of them, all these amps have good clean tones. Nothing quite like this. So yes, it is a very special amp. Old amps can be temperamental, they can be hard to find, they can be expensive. If you break apart, you want to find an original so you can say your amp is all original. You don't want to just put a modern speaker or pot in there. So it can get really expensive, all those kind of downsides. But if you have one, man, it's pretty special. Thanks so much for watching, you guys. Big thanks to the fine gentleman who lent me his very special amplifier for this video. Uh, if you guys haven't subscribed to the channel yet, be sure to do so. We got lots of great guitar content lined up for you guys. Other than that, all the gear I used, not this one, but maybe a reissue or something like that. I'll link them all in the video description below. You can check them out. Other than that, have a great day. Take care.